Don in London, hello. It's July 10th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance was alcohol and my behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places and things. Being with the right people, in the right place, with the right things, maybe doing the right things. Trying to be perfect, trying to fit in, very trying person. Because I wanted you to like me and accept me and for me to be a part of your world, especially in work and especially in relationships and to get value out of doing the right thing. And those are all good qualities to an extent, but with drink in the mix, where before drink I wasn't quite sure of life, and after taking that first drink, learning that I had a load of feelings inside me which came out, often to extremes, well, in a good way for the most part, but then in a sad way when exhausted beyond belief I kept trying to be the old me that I used to be and I'll tell you more about that in a moment but what helped me get into sobriety family, friends, community, professionals and a fellowship and that fellowship is AA Alcoholics Anonymous I don't speak for AA, never can, never will it's full of unique authentic people who speak for themselves as they choose and where they choose freedom to choose where to speak and share experience, strength and hope so I try and share a little bit, a bit about what AA has done for me in these videos and what's happening in my life and what's going on with this 12 step program which is the basic toolkit of how to keep sober and then life can be as it is we get the freedom to choose what we can do based on real life and the situation in which we are today. A one day program, 24 hours a day, and it's not hardship and it's not as difficult as trying to do it with a drink in hand and several inside me. So how did AA help me? Well the AA preamble which is shared at the beginning of every meeting is on this little card and I'll share it now because it it's really important to understand how fellowship works. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking and that's the most important sentence there for me because it means there are no rules, laws or regulations binding people to do something which is not right for them. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. At the same time, however, People in AA are allied with sects, organisations, denominations, politics and institutions because that's just the way life is. So we have our alliances. But the fellowship is not allied with anything. It's a self-supporting fellowship or society where people go for one reason, a desire not to drink anymore. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So part of the whole process is, if we can stay sober, maybe we can share some experience, strength and hope for another person to start the journey of sobriety, <coughs> which is one day long. And that, in a nutshell, is what fellowship is all about. And then, of course, it gets difficult because every human being in fellowship is in a unique, a unique place in their life, an authentic place in their life and no two people are in the same place in their outlook and what they're facing on a daily basis but this one similarity around sobriety and sharing what's going on for us means that we get a broad spectrum of wisdom from many people in fellowship as well as many people outside fellowship and the good news is for the sober head and not driven to drink anymore we can make more sense of our situation in terms of our feelings, 
and being in the moment of now. So the fellowship is really emotional and spiritual well-being. Emotional in understanding our feelings and spiritual in the sense of knowing what's going on right now. Everything is spiritual. It's happening now. And if there's anything I've learned, the only place where we can change things is in the, the ever-present moment of now. So if we are working to freedom of choice, even though we have restrictions based on where we are in our lives, and in our life experience and our life situation, it's better seen with a sober head because we're not building up anything which we we can then see as a mountain to conquer. We don't have to do that anymore. The uh, the horizon is a clear view for miles and miles and miles often. Or if there, if there is a great big rock in the way, we don't have to smash our way through it. We can often walk around it. And I share some of my thoughts and also the daily reflections here. <coughs> and the daily reflections from the fellowship literature in July is all about step seven which is dealing with our shortcomings and in my drinking days my shortcomings could be not enough faith, not enough courage and not enough confidence and it's been painful reminders over the last few days about what work situations can do to people and I've put here as a hard, well actually what I'll do is share the daily reflections first so that's the, the fellowship literature if you like and then some of my thoughts so AA daily reflections toward peace and serenity for July 10th when we have taken a square look at some of these defects that's in step 6 my defects fear putting on a brave face an ego covering up shame and guilt about failures have discussed them with another and have become willing to have them removed our thinking about humility commences to have a wider meaning and that comes from the 12 steps and 12 traditions so if I understand what was pulling me down into fear, putting on a brave face an ego covering up my failures and I've discussed it with another person this is step 4 and 5 in step 6 I know what my defects are my defects of character being pulled into the mire yet, yet again where fear rules rather than faith faith in doing the next right thing often doesn't necessarily mean faith in, a, in God. It depends on your belief system and it's not for me to judge it either way. Our thinking about humility commences to have a wider me meaning and this is July in step 7. Humility, all about the ability to keep on learning, to be open to change, to be open to new ideas, to let go fear and let in a bit of faith, courage to keep on going for the next right thing as best we can see it in the moment of now and if we can't see it on our own ask another person quickly what would you do in my situation and it goes on to say when situations arise which destroy my serenity pain often, often motivates me to ask God for clarity in seeing my part in the situation so I can ask my higher power whatever I perce perceive it to be so I might look to truth, love and wisdom not my opinion or belief but what is the truth of this situation and if I can't get clarity the, the higher power for me seems to work through other people that is the greater number of voices in the fellowship will give me some advice and understanding or share their experience, strength and hope admitting my powerlessness I humbly pray for acceptance I try to see how my character defects contribute to the situation that is a failure to comprehend what's going on, feeling fearful, putting on a brave face and not wishing to seem stupid or uh, put down, an ego covering the guilt of being an inadequate in some way. Could I have been more patient? Was I intolerant? Often the answer for me is yes. But also I have to look to what, what is happening with other people, their impatience, their intolerance and what, the, what they're trying to achieve. Did I insist on having my own way? Was I afraid? As my defects are revealed, I put self-reliance aside and humbly ask God to remove my shortcomings. In other words, asking God or help from other people helps me develop my courage, faith and confidence to keep on going. It doesn't mean I've got to smash my way through and get my, my way. It means sometimes I need to walk around a situation 
and come out and start a new situation somewhere else but that's not to repeat the old patterns it's to say some things are immovable and if I get in the way of them they will flatten me the situation may not change but as I practice exercising humility I enjoy the peace and serenity which are the natural benefits of placing my reliance in a power greater than myself and if I'd actually taken that on board I think my life would have been a lot easier in terms of what direction do I want to go in what is it I really want to do in life and sometimes the answer is I don't know what I want to do in life but I certainly don't want to keep on doing the things I'm doing that can be a good starting point and it's not a reaction based on fear often it's a reaction these days based on acceptance of life on life's terms and if I'd known in the past that some situations would never be made good by me trying to bulldoze my way through and see it and control it and manipulate it to my vision rather than the truth of the situation I'd have found myself in better circumstances and I wouldn't have had a nervous breakdown and that leads me on to my thoughts today <coughs> because one or two people I've been sharing with via various means of communication across the world this is what I was thinking this morning as a hard-working professional confident that I could prevail even the most extreme business scenarios it came as a shock I could be bullied into a quivering wreck broken and beyond repair and this happened to me because I knew I was right I was dealing with life in an open honest fair way I thought right was on my side and I could crusade I didn't realize that some people have more power in this world than I do namely the boss I worked for at that time and I ended up exhausting myself a decade later the horror when I see another in the same situation a bully can break us on our own principles and ethics never assume being right will make a bad situa situation good and this is what I did I assumed that right would prevail in a business scenario and what a foolish way to look at that I mean the world is full of anger and resentment at the moment about how some organizations have behaved in the financial world as well as the media world and it's led to banking crises and it's led to the shutdown of a new national newspaper today in the UK why well they got found out but the problem is if you're in the mix of all of that and you think you're right and you need to stop people doing bad things or try and stop bad practice or try stop another person bullying the rest of the organization when they have positional power that is where it goes wrong and the sadness about the media organization which shut down part of its newspaper empire is those who bullied people into delivering what they wanted have remained in power the bullies have won so far because they have a vested interest in denying their part in it and you know if you try and take them on they'll crush you as an individual because they can and it's just a business scenario for them they don't even see it in any way or shape a bullying scenario and the same applies in politics right now too the way our government is behaving in the UK forcing people into poverty that's what they're doing because they think they're right with their business model they're wrong but I can't change them so what do I do? I need to make the best of what is in my life situation and only if enough people have voting power will it change and we can't change it for a while not without revolution and I don't know that that would actually make it any the better change comes in its own time change to the good of life and good living as best it can but in the meantime the culture of our whole world in the UK is somewhat undermined by a bullying culture in our politics and a prejudice against a lot of people so when I hear an individual absolutely distressed beyond belief 
and I know exactly how it goes, what happens next, because the business scenarios have not changed that much in a couple of decades. And what happened to me, I know what happens. And there's no point in trying to win the unwinnable, and no po point in falling on our own principles and ethics. It's better that we p pick up our principal principles and ethics and find a more useful place to live with them. So that's harsh because it means often we have to say with humility no matter what I do it will never come right to the way I understand right to be. So walk around the rock rather than let the rock drop on you is what I'm saying. So that's not cowardly it's uh, accepting real life on real life's terms that one individual can't change a whole organisation nor the person who's directing it the wrong way. Truth will out eventually but we don't have to be made martyrs in the process. We walk round it, we let it suffer in its own juice. We don't need to add any flame or heat to it and certainly we don't need to compromise on our ethics and principles. We just take them elsewhere into another environment, community, whatever it happens to be. Very much like the principles of the 12 steps, it's not about exerting our will, it's seeing real life as it is and moving to a better place in our living and understanding of what is possible and not possible. And that sounds horrible but it's true in my experience. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Anyway, two meetings yesterday first reminded me fellowship offers emotional and spiritual well-being living to good principles in the 12 steps and our speaker was fantastic for me because they were very short and to the point which helped me be short and to the point in my sharing back which is AA's principles 12 steps are about emotional and spiritual well-being emotional in the terms of knowing my feelings right now and how they fit in the moment of now and what is helping them be the way they are. So when I ask myself how am I feeling, why and what can I do, if my feelings fit what is going on now, I'm in the moment. So emotional and feelings, spiritual in the moment of now. And uh, mention of Eckhart Tolle uh, positively and negatively yesterday. But you can't go around what he says being untrue, it's just a question of where it came from. Spiritual is all about living in the moment of now and faith and religion is an addition or a part of life for many. Spiritual doesn't follow into religion for everyone and that's just the way it is these days. Everything is spiritual, the good, the bad, the ugly. It's seeing it realistically, real life and the feelings we have about it being the same size as what's going on. The second reminded me, when we tread on the toes of our fellows, anger and rage can be evoked in a moment by a cross word. And the second meeting I went to, there is, no, there is no limit on the amount of time a person can share. So somebody was going on a little bit longer than another person felt was appropriate. That's a judgment. And they said, shut up. And of course the person who's speaking and has a lot to say gets angry, rageful and resentful, quite rightly, because the same tolerance and love has been afforded the person who said shut up. But that happens in you know meetings, that's the way it is, it's reality in the moment of now. Anyway, it's all sorted itself out because we don't hold grudges, because if we do, we go backwards into the dark of our fears and egos. And it does take time for you know, stuff to settle down. But it reminded me, humility and learning always for today. Humility to keep on learning that we can spark off into anger and resentment quite quickly. And a couple of weeks ago the same thing happened to me. Not actually in a meeting but outside it when somebody tread, trod on my toes and judged me. My goodness, I was quite surprised at my reaction. Other years, pride before a fall, pride and ego make me judge so much people, places and things. Being right and knowing it, I resented injustice and became filled with anger and resentment, followed by poor me and I drank. 
There will always be injustice. Today I need not drink on it, simply work out what I can do and cannot do and make good choices today. Which is, I don't need to go buy uh, a gun and shoot the person who angered me. I need to walk around them often and let them get on with it. You know, I, There's no way of changing another person's outlook. Only they can change it based on what they know. And if I resent them or get angry with them, I just join in and aim, end up in the same mess. So I prefer not to do that. And it's not easy, because when we feel righteous, we, we do feel righteous, and this thing of ego and bravery, rather than courage, faith and confidence, seems to come out more. After all, we are human, aren't we? And we do need these moments of anger and resentment to really understand where we are. And is this right for us? And often the answer is no. Move on, move around, let be, let go. So, finally, toward peace and serenity, a daily experience in living life. We have a toolkit, toolkit in recovery. Today and how we apply ourselves in our activities is, an, is underpinned by what we learn and put into practice, utilising the experience, strength and hope we see from others around us. And I get a lot of that inside and out, outside the fellowship. In humility we learn, in pride we fall. That's so often true. And you know, when I was a hard-working professional in an industry where I had a, a bully for a boss, I didn't realize, I, I knew they were a bully, but I didn't think it applied to me that they could get me down. I didn't think they could crush me like they did, but they did. And I was quite horrified how they did it, because I didn't realize that my ethics and principles, open, honest, willing, and fair dealing, would be the things which would undo me because I persevered thinking right would happen and it didn't I didn't get out in time and I, I stayed too long in a bad situation which I could not change and it took me a long time to realise that uh, it's only a power greater than me which often gives me the wisdom and that's the words and voices of the many rather than my inner voice which says keep on going, you'll sort it out you can prove you're right and they are wrong and yes to an extent I probably did but it didn't change the outcome exhaustion, a breakdown and then a few years later uh, no way of stopping drinking as desolation settled in for a long time a very black period in my life and I don't wish it on anyone so we learn what helps me today though Humility, the serenity prayer, looking for the answer from others rather than the inner voice, which may have all the right answers for me, but not necessarily for everyone else. So I look for the answers often in what is said by those with wisdom of the years. And the serenity prayer, oh, I've gone a long time, I just realised. The serenity prayer, which is to help me sort it out when I can't really get hold of anybody in the moment of now the can do can't do and the wisdom to know the difference it's to God good conscience or whatever you understand your higher power to be it could be simply that inner voice which is informed by the wisdom of life so to God or good conscience grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me just for today and in the moment of now